Hello, another fat bearded man talking about records here, uh, but apparently my fingerprints belong to somebody called Headley. Hmm. Hello VC and the wider community. Um, I'm going to do a kind of a special video today because I got a, vid um, a haul of records by one record label that I've become a little bit obsessed with. And um, this goes back to my first video. I showed a record in my first video, um, which I had just picked up by a uh, independent small uh, record label called Flying Fish. And I showed this um, postcard that came with it. And um, it's a, you can send off for the t-shirt or the poster. And Flying Fish is a, um, a a record label that deals in sort of American folk music. So folk, country, blues, Cajun, jazz, um, it even has reggae apparently. Um, a bit of everything. Now it was formed by this guy here, um, or, or founded, sorry. Um, this is Bruce Kaplan and he founded it in 1974. Um, he was a, um, a, an anthropologist uh, um, studying at university, so much like the Lomaxes, he was very interested in um, human culture and, of course, um, the folk music of uh, the communities. So he became interested, he, he became a producer for a while, for, for uh, early on, for Rounder Records. Um, I think they only started in 72. And I'm, I'm going to put Bruce down now. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, he, so he started his label. Um, basically, he looked at that kind of independent folk records that were being put out by other labels. And he thought that they, were look, they looked very unprofessional. They, they didn't really do the artist justice. So one of the things he did was he decided that... Um, production values needed to be higher so uh, the design of the records um, and they made sure that the records were posted out to re uh, radio stations and they got their artists to do um, uh, tours to support the album so they really pushed it and you know for a while it was very very successful you know that in that that sort of tier between the the sort of self-publishing stuff and the big boys he was kind of in the middle there um Unfortunately, he died in 1992 um, of a, a, a complications from an ear infection, sadly. Um, his wife and one of his partners continued with the label for a, a couple of years, but, um, uh, but it folded. Well, it didn't fold. It was um, bought up by Rounder Records um, a couple of years later. So it's now an imprint uh, of Rounder and... Um, yeah, so some of the recordings that they, they, they released are still available, which is quite good. Anyway, so I was on Discogs having a look around and I started, I, I searched for um, Flying Fish Records um, and I found one seller that was selling uh, a load of um, Flying Fish uh, releases that were um, sealed in the shrink, shrink wrap. And he was only wanting like a pound or a couple of pound each. So um, I bought uh, a number of them. And so um, I'll show you what I got. Um, they're an interesting lot. And um, here we go. So the first one. I've got the window right ahead of me. So I've, I've left all the um, the shrink on really to sort of show you that they were, they were in the shrink. This is uh, Chuck Suki. That's pronounced Suki apparently. Uh, this was released in 1987. Um, he was a farmer, um, so he's singing about, you know, things he knows about. Um, he's from uh, North Dakota, and he's apparently, apparently he's still going, and he is the official troubadour of North Dakota. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you get to be that. So, yeah, this is music from the Great Plains, and, yeah, it's folky, country-esque. Um, singer-songwriter, very nice stuff. Um, it's got a small uh, uh, outfit, just him 
on vocals, guitar and accordion, and we've got someone on, on mandolin and fiddle, uh, and someone on bass. So it's a small little band. And actually there's a, when it says accordion, he does do an accordion um, tune, or a couple of accordion tunes, which sound very sort of Eastern European, but then I suppose with a name like Suki, he probably could well be. I don't know about the Dakota sort of people, where they come from. Anyway, there we go. Chuck Suki. Uh, the next one, Gates of Love, um, Andrew Calhoun. Um, and this was released in 1984. He's a poet uh, and a songwriter. Um, and this is a lovely folky uh, album. Um, it's kind of similar, if you're familiar at all with any of um, uh, sort of John Renborn, um, that, that sort of meeting of, of English folk with a slightly kind of Renaissance medieval kind of feel to it. Um, some of the stuff that um, the Watersons did um, sounds very similar to this. And in fact it's got a, um, a tune on here which is a tune for two guitars um, called Gavotte Rondeau which was written by um, the, let me get this right, the music teacher of Louis XIV. So there you go. So there's a kind of a sort of a, that's not a renaissance, is it? It's later than that. But um, yeah, uh, he was influenced by Leonard Cohen, uh, Martin Carthy, and you can hear it on this. His, his lyrics are great. The songs don't necessarily, the structure of his rhymes and, and songs are very much like um, poetry. Not, not necessarily the songs, but it works really well. Very nice album. Um, yeah, like I said, his guitar pick is very reminiscent of John Remborn. Okay, this is Larry Long. Um, it's called Sweet Thunder. And um, I've been real problems with it. Look, you can see out the window. Isn't that lovely? It's raining. It's horrible. Um, this is... Um, what's his name? Oh, hang on. Larry Long. Uh, yeah, 1987. He's from Des Moines, uh, in, uh, Indiana. No, Iowa. Um, and he is a yeah singer songwriter, um, political minded, um, a community uh, kind of activist, and he 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 very much writes songs for communities. Um, he researches and, and finds out about um, areas, and this itself actually has um, oh what's it called? It's got a a song about. Um, if I take out the the inner, you can probably see there's a an incident, and actually it's the um, uh, the largest mass execution in American history, and it was um, uh, um, 38 um, Dakota Native Americans who, during the Dakota uprising, were arrested and um, you subsequently murder them. There's a picture there of the, the gallows of them all being hung. Yeah, so the song's all about that, and clearly it's um, um, a sort of a protest song against the way they were treated. Now, um, I, as I said, I've kept these all in their cellophane, in their shrink wrap. I'm going to be taking them out as soon as I've done this video, because this is the reason. Can you see that? This is This is what it's doing to the... Yeah. So those of you that keep your shrink wrap on, I'm... Well, you know, you're risking that. Now, it's not warped the record yet, because this is only from 87. But a couple, I don't know, a couple more decades of that, and that's going to be... Um, yeah, it's going to knacker up that record, isn't it? Uh, so, yeah. Very nice album, though. As I said, I'm going to be taking them out. And, of course, all of these... Hello. Oh, what am I doing? That's going to fall out. I'll do that later. Um, yeah, all of these are um, cutouts. That's clearly they were got as a job lot. Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a nice album. Um, I'm a bit rambly today, aren't I? I do apologise. This is uh, the Phil Salazar band. Um, they call themselves, or he calls themselves, sort of fusion folk. It's a bit of folk of everything. So you've got a bit of bluegrass, you've got a bit of folk, you've got a bit of blues, you've got a bit of... Uh, Ragtime in there. There's a bit of everything, really. Uh, mostly sort of bluegrass. 
Um, and uh, this is from Southern California. Um, progressive bluegrass, really, with um, able to sort of do other sorts of things. Again, cut out, as you can see. Um, yeah, nothing more really to say about that one. Uh, this is Anne Romain. Uh, this is Take a Stand. This is more uh, country than anything. Um, it does a bit of everything. It's got sort of folky, bluegrassy country. It's got sort of modern um, sort of country as well. Um, the It's got some guests on here as well. So we've actually got Hazel Dickens, who's a famous folky, uh, and John Hartford playing fiddle and um, banjo on it. Uh, John Hartford, I should have said actually, John Hartford was one of the uh, artists that um, recorded for uh, Flying Fish, uh, as did um, Norman Blake, uh, Doc Watson, um, who else have got a list actually that I forgot to say, um, Vassa Clements, in fact it was the first release was Vassa Clements, uh, New Grass Revival, Tom Paxton, uh, Sweet Honey in the Rock, so they all recorded for. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice album this. Um, she, uh, sadly, she died in 95, um, but um, she was a, a, an educator, she was a, a historian, um, and I suppose kind of was interested in, in the, the, the folky contents, in, again, in that sort of local community history uh, stuff. Nice album. Okay, Straight Ahead Bluegrass. Um, this is um, Weary Hearts by Heart. Um, and this was released in 89 and um, yeah uh, like I said it's straight ahead um, bluegrass um, ironically this was released in 89 um, I've just I found out that the band disbanded in 1989 uh, so they clearly just made this and, and buggered off um, it's um, got a number of uh, people that would go on to work with other artists so Ron Block um, that's Ron Block uh, he went on to be in um, a Union Station, um, uh, Alison Krause's backing band. And uh, Mike Bubb on bass uh, spent some time working with the Del McCurry band. So yeah, so they've kind of gone on, or even though they're defunct. So nice bluegrass album. Nothing more than that. Okay, last couple. Um, keep this short. This is Ken Bloom. Uh, this is one of the earlier... Uh, records. I'll tell you what, I'll show a, a flying fish label, shall I? There we go. It's an early one. So this is from, I think, oh gosh, I can't remember. It's not got it on it. I think it's 77. I might be wrong. Anyway, Ken Bloom, um, he's a, a kind of a multi-instrumentalist. Um, and you can see on the back of here, all the various instruments he plays. Sorry, I, I should have taken the shrink wrap off. The, the reflections are terrible. Um, so yeah, th we've got the sort of um, uh, bazookis and uh, dulcimers. He plays. In fact, there's a, there's a if you look up Ken Bloom and uh, Bode um, dulcimer, um, you can see him playing on YouTube. Uh, really interesting sounds. Um, it's got all kinds of people um, helping out. We've got. Um, uh, oh, what's his face? Um, Steve Goodman. Uh, he who wrote um, uh, uh, ride, The City of New Orleans. Yeah, Riding on the City of New Orleans. Uh, yeah, he sings on this. Um, Ken Bloom does as well. But um, yeah, it's very nice, very nice folky. And actually, there's, there's a couple of songs that... So you've got him doing jazz stuff like Making Whoopi as well. So he's kind of taking in all of the sort of American musics, really. Um, and then on the other side, on B side, we've got um, lots of sort of um, tunes from around the world. So he can show off his bazooki playing and his balalaika playing. Uh, but that's a really nice album, that Ken Bloom. OK, the last one I will leave you with. And this is probably my favourite of the lot. This is uh, The Tattoo on My Chest by uh, Luke Baldwin. Um, and I can't, you can see that tattoo on his chest. Hang on. That's rather groovy tattoo on his chest, isn't it? I think it's supposedly a jackalope. Yeah, sort of a hare with antlers. Um, and this is, um, it's been described as outlaw country. 
Now, I don't think... I mean, this was from 70... This is from 77. <laughs> 76, sorry. And, um, yeah, I wouldn't... I wouldn't necessarily... That would imply that it sounds like Waylon Jennings or Willie Nelson or uh, Tom Paul Glazer. It doesn't. The nearest thing I would say this sounds like um, is... is um, Oh, gosh, what's his name? Um, John Prine. Uh, very similar to that. He's got a wry sense of humour, a bit like John Prine as well. Um, apparently he was a bit of a boozer. He was a, a friend of Utah Phillips, uh, the musician. Um, and um, he was a bit of a, a, a drinker and a, a, a tear away. And he recorded this one album and um, then kind of got himself straight went off to Harvard and got a, a doctorate in education and he went on to become a, um, a published author on an expert on uh, child educational development. There you go. There you go. From that to this. Um, and yeah, a lovely, a lovely album. Again, it's on that flying pitch label. I do like the label. And um, this is one of the earlier ones, obviously. Uh, like I say, they're all sealed, which was lovely, so they're all minty, minty. Um, yeah, a really lovely, lovely album. And, um, yeah, unfortunately he died um, in the early 90s, I think. I might be wrong. Anyway, there you go. That's my Flying Fish collection. Um, I've rambled through that lot, so I will leave you um, now before it gets any longer for no apparent reason. So, uh, until I see you again, bye-bye for now.